Hello, Pettifs Cross here with some advancement training. Seems as though the fall advancement exams are scheduled to occur as planned. Uh, therefore, let's do some quick advancement training. Uh, the first two lessons today are going to be for all rates, so hopefully you might find some use in it. Okay, lesson one. First lesson will be on eval scoring and how to determine what your score will be in approximate value uh, before going to the test so you have an idea of how reasonable is it uh, for you to advance or how much you need to be studying. So it used to be the old scale was that a P was worth 3.6 as a base multiplier, MP is 3.8, EP 4.0, and 4.0 being the maximum score you could have as an eval base multiplier. Now with the addition of something called RSCA or Reporting Senior Cumulative Average Score Additions, uh, that value can be as high as 5.8. So the numbers skew a lot. And if you're not familiar with how that score change might affect your score going into the exam, you should know how it works. Okay, let's look at it. Take your typical eval. Uh, you got your performance traits, professional knowledge, quality of work, teamwork, mil military bearing, all that. You're given some point value from between one and four. And those are all added up and divided to give you your block 40 individual trade average, right? This is, I pulled this from the internet, it's not mine. Um, your individual trade average. And with the addition of RISCA, whoever your reporting senior is, they tally up all the ITAs for everyone that, that's reporting under them, and they give a value called the reporting senior's cumulative average, it's just the average of all those scores divided by the number of people. And it's not shown here, but it should be the, at the bottom of your block 43. And if you look up your evals on BOL, you'll be able to find that value. I pulled one offline because the all was down. Now you'll have a difference. You, sh you may have a difference between the risk of value and your value. If your individual trade average, your block 40, is at the risk of or below, you won't be penalized. But if it is above the reporting seniors cumulative average, so that means of the people that your reporting senior is averaging and grading on, if you're above that average, you're gonna get a bonus. That's the thinking. I'm just gonna talk about the how today though. So if, let's say your ITA in block 40 is a 4.0 and the reporting senior cumulative average delineated at the bottom of block 43 is a 3.5. Here's the tricky part. Go to navadmin 312-18, just Google it, pretty simple. There's a chart on page two, points above RISCA, and let's say ours was 0.5. Translate that to 0.80 that you're gonna add to your eval score. So let's say before before RISC was implemented, you had an EP at a 4.0 multiplier. Now you have that 4.0 plus 0.8. So 4.8 is your new multiplier, okay? Not that hard, it's a little bit tricky. Um, I've found some confusion, people don't quite get how to do it. So that's your new base multiplier. Then you can look additionally through NavAdmin 312-18 to look for how to calculate based on your, your pay grade um, E5s, you take your last three evals with a new RISCA, and that only applies since RISCA has only been implemented since fall 2019. So evals before that won't have the RISCA, you just take your old eval number, whatever that is, MP 3.8, P 3.6, etc. Right? You should know that. Um, take, take them up, three, add them, divide them, get that number, that's your base multiplier. Times it by 30, in case of E5s, subtract 60. That's your that's your score, your eval score going into your exam, right? Um, the additional calculations still apply. If you have, for education points, if you have an associate's, that's two points you add. Bachelor's is four points you add. Award points, uh, flocks are one point with a maximum of two flocks you can apply. NAMs are two points, comms three points, et cetera, et cetera. P and A points are still in effect and time in pay grade are still in effect as well. That's all in the nav admin, but it's important you know that because going from a, a maximum 4.0 scale to a maximum 5.8 scale, it's gonna be much more granular and it might affect the way your score looks going into the exam. Um, you can pull up a profile sheet if someone else is taking, let's say you're a CTN2 going for CTN1. Um, if you have a buddy or if you took the test and you pull up a profile sheet to look at what the score was last time, you can get a rough approximation. Those numbers can change. And especially with RISCA, that number is going to change maybe in unpredictable ways. But at least you have some sort of clue about what numbers you have going into the test. Okay, that's the end of part one. Thank you for watching. Okay, part two is the relationship of occupational standards to the bibliographies for your rate as the study materials for the advancement exam. Just Google your rate and occupational standards. You should find something that looks like this. This is for CTNs. 
Uh, it should have your rating designator on the front. It'll give you table of contents with subspecialties of your rating. And then it'll have a bunch of pages that look like this. So the takeaway is, these are the standards for your job, right? What do you need to do to do your particular rating? Some of those are core tasks. Some of those are non-core tasks. The core tasks function as a key clue to what exam writers are concerned about testing you on as far as how well can you do your job based on the standards of the job. So if you look up, let's say you're uh, E5 going for E6, look at the E6 core tasks and then look up the task statements and then those should be the things that you're looking for when you're looking through the bibs. So for instance, a core task is to analyze data. Cool. Battle damage assessment, measures of performance, measures of effectiveness. So when you're looking through the bibs, you want to find those terms and find out what they break out to. There's a good chance that those are going to be questions that the exam writers are concerned about you knowing the answer to. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you for watching.